In this video, I am going to show you how you can figure out how much federal tax you owe if you have a taxable income of $85,000 for the year. So a couple things about this table. You should notice in column one, there's the rate and the rates go up as you make more money. And also, we are assuming we're happily single in this problem. If you were married, these dollars amount in column two would be different. So the first step here is just to figure out where this $85,000 falls on the table, which tax bracket or which row. So I think the following to myself. I go to tax bracket one and I say, does $85,000 fall between $0 and $9,700? No, it doesn't. $85,000 is bigger than $9,700. I just continue that process and hopefully you see that we are in tax bracket four. Let's think about this. $85,000 is somewhere between $84,200 and $160,725. So once I've identified the row, I just get rid of everything beneath it because so I've identified tax bracket four or row four. I don't need these other rows because I didn't make enough money to use these rows. Now here's a common mistake people make. Once they've identified row four, they say to them, themselves, okay, it's a 24% rate. So I owe 24% on this whole amount. So they take 0.24 times $85,000. That's not how it works. You're only responsible for paying 24% on any amount over $84,200. And if you think this through, $85,000 is $800 over $84,200. So you're only responsible for paying 24% on $800. This will make sense as we work through it. So let's go back to row one. And again, we're using rows one through four. This is telling us that we have to pay 10% on the first chunk of money from zero to $9,700. So here's the process I go through. It'll seem obvious at the beginning, but I'm just gonna take this $9,700 and I'll subtract zero minus zero right here. And $9,700 minus zero is 9,700. So I'll just put that over here. Now, the reason I'm doing that, because it gets more complicated in the next rows, I'm gonna have to subtract the rest of the intervals here. And by the way, these aren't minus signs right here, they're just intervals here. So in other words, I have to pay 10% on 9,700. Now I'm gonna continue this process. I'm gonna take this 39,475, and I will subtract it from this number, 9,700. And that equals, I've done this already, it's 29,775. I'm gonna need a little more room here. Let me write that over here, 29,775. And then I'll continue, I'll take this 84,200. And I will subtract this number, 39,475. And that equals 44725. Now I've got now I'm at row four. Don't mindlessly just keep doing this. Once I get to row four, the row I've identified is slightly different. I need to figure out how much $85,000 is over $84,200. And I did that at the beginning. We did that in our heads. But what that's telling us is I don't need this last number now because I'm at the row I identified. And I'm going to take my taxable income, 85000 and I will subtract it from this 84200 And that's going to equal $800. In other words, I'm only responsible for paying 24% on $800, not this whole amount. And the next piece I do is a double check. I want to make sure that this, these numbers here, right here, when I add them up, because 
when I add all these four numbers up, I get $85,000. And trust me, if you take these four numbers and add them up and you can do it, you will get $85,000. I've already done it. Now, if you do that and it doesn't come out to $85,000, you made a mistake and you'll have to redo some of your work here. But what I've really done is broken this $85,000 thousand dollars into four numbers and I'm paying different tax rates on each chunk of money. So now we're getting close to figure, figuring out how much we owe. What I'm going to do now is take the 9700 and multiply it by this 10% right over here. Remember 10% is 0.10 so I'll take 9700 times 0.10 and that's going to give us 970. Put that over here. So this equals 970 when I do that. And now I'll do the same thing here. I'll take the 29,775 and multiply it by this tax rate, 12%. So for this portion of the money, I have to pay a 12% rate. And that's going to give us, I did this, it's going to be 3573. Then I'll take the 44725 times, right over here, 0.22. That's a 0.22, and that's going to equal 9839.50. 9839.50. Hope you can read that. That's 9839.50. And then the last 800, this 800, I have to pay a 24% rate times 0.24. I will multiply that, and that gives us 192. And now what I'm going to do is add up all these numbers, and that's how much I owe. I'm going to add these all up. All these numbers here in white, so 970 plus 3573 plus 983950 plus 192, and I get a whopping 1457450. .4 and that's my answer. So in other words, if I... I'm responsible for paying taxes on $85,000. The amount I owe the federal government, at least for 2019, is $14,574.50. Now, these tables can change each year, but this is for 2019. That's pretty much all there is to it. I just, in the next two examples, I just want to go over some special cases that you might run into. So let's say your taxable income here was $39,475. This is a little weird because the $39,475, you have to figure out which tax bracket you're in. It falls, you see it twice. You see it here and here. So for this particular table, you just use the first row that you see. So I see tax bracket two before tax bracket three. So I'll use tax bracket two. That's how you do this. So that's just kind of a special case. So you won't reuse rows three through seven. And then you go through the same process. We might as well go ahead and do this. You're going to pay a 10% rate here. So I'll just take the 9,700 minus zero, which is 9,700. And let me just give myself a little more room here. And then now when you're at the row you've identified again it's slightly different because this number is the exact same as your taxable income so you can either take this number minus 9700 or this number minus 9700 they're the same number so we'll subtract these two 39475 minus 9700 and we've already done this in the previous problem you get 29775 And then all you do is multiply by the respective rates. So this will be times. And Oh, before you do that, remember to always add these up, right? Once you, this piece here, when you add these two up, you will get the taxable income here. So do that as a double check. I've, I've already done that, and you can do it if you'd like to. Then we'll just multiply this times 0 0.10. We'll multiply this by, from right here, We'll multiply this one by 0.12 from right here. And that's going to be 970. When I multiply this times this, I get 970. And this is going to be this times 0.12, which I believe I have done is 3573. 
and you'll just add these up. So that's kind of a special case because the number falls on the interval. Let me add these real quick. I haven't actually done that. It's 970 plus 3573. And I got 4543. So that's how much tax you would owe in this situation. So if you have a taxable income of 39475 this is how much federal tax you owe right here. One more special case. Let's say you had a taxable income of $1,200. Which tax bracket is that in, or which row of the table? Well, hopefully you see it's row 1. So I'll circle row 1, and then I get rid of every row below it. Right, so here you might have been a part-time student and you didn't really work that much and you made this much money. In this situation, you don't need to do any fancy math here. It just says you owe 10% on any amount between $0 and $9,700. So all you need to do if it falls in row one, if you're in the, in the tax bracket, tax bracket one, you just take this amount, the one, two, zero, zero. And you just multiply it by this rate, 10%, and you're done. So that would equal $120. So if you earn $1,200, you have to pay $120 in taxes for the year, federal taxes. Again, if you fall in row one, no fancy math at all. You just take your taxable income and multiply it by this 10% right here, and you're done. So that's uh, another special case as well, and it's actually the easiest situation you will fall into. Well, I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.